Good day and welcome to the Ed to Grow Pro Train Import webinar. We have waited for this day for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, Lori, thank you much. And again, I want to introduce our panel here. And of course, not to forget Mr. Olson. And again, Matthew is the one that makes this possible. So what are we going to do today? Well. Um, again, we, we, we have been talking to Ed to Go and ProTrain users for a while about ways to help them out. So we wanted you to know what we are thinking. And again, thanks to the leadership of, uh, again, from Ed to Go and ProTrain staff. Um, the, the basic problem as we're hearing is that how to get the registrations taken by an external vendor. Again, where you would contract with your online provider for them to do the registrations but you really want to get them into Student Manager. So, uh, solution, and we, we were thinking, well, integrated, automatic, fully automatic, and we said, you know that, we're, we're going to aim for that. But in the meantime, is there a quick and functional and efficient solution that we can come up with uh, that we can get out sooner rather than later? And basically, with some work from, help from the vendors, we said, if we can get a data file from the vendor. We can build, thanks to Matthew, an import tool, bring it into Student Manager. And so that is basically what we're going to talk about today. Again, this is going to be pretty short. The import, hopefully you'll see, is quite simple. And the question will be afterwards um, in our little discussion, I will invite you to chat and put in recommendations or thoughts or even if you say, hey, what I want to talk about with you, I, I need a phone call, uh, you know, just put a note in the chat that have Chuck call me uh, or Matthew call me, and we will actually give you a personal audience and find out how you think uh, life might be made simpler in this process. And again, uh, Betty and Devlin, that doesn't, that doesn't apply to you. Sorry, you guys got to listen. We're going to listen to the customers. So. All right, so here's our general goals. So what are we going to try to do with this? Uh, here are some assumptions. Number one, that we can get a download file from your partner, either ed to go or ProTrain, that has student information, a course ID, and a registration fee. Number two, that you're going to be recording or creating, and we're going to do this, a unique course per, reg per registration, a unique course per activity that you're, you're, you're purchasing. If it's a QuickBooks course from ed to go or if it's a writing class from ProTrain, every different course will have a course inside Student Manager. Number two, three. Each participant has a unique email and that will be uh, their, their, the way that Matthew will check for them for duplicates. We will store to their registration either the retail fee, in other words, that's the uh, retail fee that your student would be paying to the vendor for the course, or a net fee. I know a couple of you record the net fee, which is the amount you keep in Student Manager, and you just reference the retail fee. And then number five would be an option to group the registrations for later payoff. And again, uh, we're, we're still obviously trying to understand and, and uh, uh, our vendor partners have been helpful about helping us understand how their systems work. But the idea of group download and the option to, to apply that check that you get, for, the big check you get from your partner for their online registrations to apply those to all the registrations in a batch so you don't have to do it one by one. Okay, that's our assumptions and kind of how uh, Matthew was, was asked to build this. So, um, where do you start? Okay, this is a new function, a new option under registration preferences where you can identify the name of the fee that you're going to apply to this online course vendor and then uh, the fee that you're going to apply to the registration for that class. And we'll talk about that when we look at the example download. And again, you'll be able to have a preference to say which fee is the which fee description 
is the one that's going to go into the registration. The retail fee description or the net fee description uh, that you put on the registration record. All right. Then you go to tools, and basically they'll be under import, export, and Edigo import, a ProTrain import. And again, to, for our partners, uh, both Edigo and ProTrain, we're still working with them on building out the downloads. So we're kind of uh, jumping ahead of them in terms of the import. Uh, Matthew, I think, is this going to be, are you going to enable this in, in 37? I said this is kind of in beta now. Yeah, the the next build, and I'm thinking release either tomorrow or early next week. Okay. So that that option will be on the next release. Again, uh, don't go be bugging your 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 vendor partners yet. It's going to be another two to three weeks in some cases before they're available. We'll be working with each one individually about when uh, they have their official. Um, release of the download that that is set up to come into here. So uh, again, don't 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 call up your 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 rep uh, this afternoon after the session. And say I want that download, not ready yet. So so again, just just chill a little bit, chill a little bit. Because again, we may want to do some work with this depending on what we hear hear from you guys in in a minute or two. All right, you go to tools, you hit the import. And then you have a source file of what it is you're going to get. And I'm going to see if I can roll to live mode here. Oh, live mode. There we go. Oh, hang on a second. OK. Um, the file, the, an example of a file that we're going to get from the vendor is going to have information like this. Last name, first name, email, phone number, birth date appears to be common for both, address, city, state, postal code, a course code, a section number. Uh, and again, um, I think the vendors allow you to have some flexibility on the section number. That's the number we're using for the number that's going to go into the course number in Student Manager. Uh, the course title, uh, the course type, the enroll date, start date, end date, and then get usually completion, status, wholesale price, retail price, and the collected buy. So look at these numbers. Generally, again, your vendors have what is the retail price that your student will pay, and then there's the price that they, and as they charge you. That's the amount uh, that, that you're going to pay for uh, the class or the amount they're going to deduct from the retail price um, in order to give to you. Uh, now again, in our model, our first draft of putting together this import, what we're doing for a net price is taking the retail price minus the wholesale price and we're putting that, the net price, in the registration record. So again, that's something we'll We'll listen to you to hear how, how you do it. So, all right, and Lori, if, if anybody has a, a burning question uh, that you think is relevant, uh, otherwise, though, we'll get to questions in, a, in about five minutes. Okay, back to uh, the processes then, and we're going to do from the current slide. So this would be uh, a download file with data in it, uh, and here's the big deal. That Excel file, this is an Excel file, can have multiple names, multiple courses, multiple registrations in it. In other words, uh, it, you can download the registration transactions from your vendor weekly, monthly, however the pro, whatever the time schedule that you might want to have. I guess it makes sense to me, and in talking with the partners, that if you tie the download to the, tie, the way they cut the checks to you guys, that would facilitate the group, uh, the grouping, and the group payoff. So um, anyway, uh, the, the point is you don't have to have a separate download for each course. It can have a mixed bag uh, in that download. All right, let's go do it. Rosie the Riveter is ready to get to work. So let's get to Manager. So here is Student Manager 36.7, about to be 37. 
So uh, edit preferences, register, there is your retail, uh, the fee description, and the fee description for what would be your net value. Uh, again, uh, this is in the registration fee description category, so you can use a different fee descriptor for that if you want. Uh, that's done, of course, out of, out of registration codes. So if we go to fees, course main fees, this is where, this is where you can set up if you wanted a special fee description. Where's the tool? Import, export, Edigo import, ProTrain import. All right, we're going to go alphabetically. Edigo goes first. So Edigo, we're going to go find the import file. There it is. Student, uh, download, Edigo. Now, here's the questions. Uh, the menu is pretty simple. Do you want your registrations grouped? Of course we do, yep, because we're going to pay for them. Do you want to assign them a source code? Yes, we're going to do a source code, and we'll call this Ed to go. And that's it. So we have added five names to the system, so none of these students were in our database. Um, there, were, there were a total of five records. Five of them were added because they were all new. There were three courses added, and there were five registrations added to the system. So we're going to go look up the courses now. So here we have the three at the bottom, ACE, Introduction to ACEWARE, Medical Coding, How to Build a Cray. So we're going to look at that one. Now, what happened there in the import was when that course number section number from your import file was brought in, Matthew checked it against the course database. If he did not find it, he created this course. And so this course was automatically created by Aceware. Now I see actually, Matthew, you used the created by of the user who is running the import, which probably is fine. And the fees for this course, this was the retail price fee. This is the uh, net price fee uh, for this class. And then if we look at Ad Edit Registrations, we see that we have the registration, Mr. Ray Miller, How to Build a Cray. The contract price was $5.95, which represents the difference between the Twenty-four ninety-five and the rate of the nineteen hundred dollars. All right, so that was the course, that was the registration. Now, the group thing, we added these five people in from the Edigo download, and we have all five of these people in a group now. So uh, the total of that was eight eighty-one. Now, if you did, if you did time this so that the download of those registrations would correlate to the time frame when you're going to get your monthly check or your, 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 your credit to the bank account for these particular registrations. In order to apply the payment, all you'd have to do is look up one of those people, Judy Royal, go into her registration, She's in the group, click on payments, and then you'd apply the amount. So there's that nice check from Ed to go. It's $881. It is a check. It's from the payer name. You know, this is one where you say, wait a minute, no, it's not Judy Royal. We go to the payer name, which would be Ed to go, and I didn't set up. Sorry, uh, uh, Josh and, and Devlin, I don't have Ed to go in, but the point is you'd have Ed to go as a payer. You'd put in, yeah, this is, I, they really aren't located in the Cayman Islands, guys. So Ed to go, whatever the, however you might want to record that particular payment, hit the OK button, and you've applied the payment to that entire group. Okay, that is basic the story. Um, so we're going to do it again. Uh, we're going to go to tools. We're going to go to database admin. 
we're going to import go ex import oh, export. I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. I'm uh, too many. Protein import. We're going to go get the protein download. You want to group them? You betcha. Assign them a source code. Yes, we're going to call that PT for protrain. Now, there were six records in that file altogether. All of them were new records. There were two courses added to the system and six registrations added to the system. So again, um, we're going to go look up these courses. And here we have Introduction to Chainsaw Safety. Hmm. So there's a course. Um, and we look at the list. Paul Bunyan and Baby the, Babe the Blue Ox, Tom Thumbless are all part of the Chainsaw Safety class. And you'll note that their registrations, their contract price was 49 bucks, which represents the difference between the retail price and the, your wholesale price, what you're having to pay uh, Betty for the privilege of giving that course. So. Um, that is um, that is the the base project, and then we could go in and pay for that. Now, what happens if you have a student who registers for the course again or for another course? So let's take a look at if I've got my import group. Here is a set of names. Paul Bunyan has taken another class. Kenneth Royal has taken another class. Those guys are familiar because they were in our first batch of downloads. Uh, so let's see what happens if we try to import them again, but in a different class. So we go to Tools, Import, Export. And again, where this was uh, at the Go Import, Student Supplement, all of these groups, sure. Assign them a source code, yes. Uh, PT. And again, two names were two records processed, zero names added to the system. So the system was able to identify that Paul and, and Mr. Royal were already in the system and did not add them again. And again, one of the courses in that group was already in the system, so it didn't add it. Two registrations were added. So if we go now to Chainsaw Safety, uh, we would see that uh, Kenneth Royale has now been added to the to the um, to the safety class, and if we go look up his record, uh, Royal, if I could type his name, get on home roll, Kenneth Royale, and now he has two courses in the system: medical coding and chainsaw safety. Um, so. Kids, that is the story, and I'm sticking to it. So what we kind of review, we added the name, and if that email existed, it didn't create a dupe, but applied the registration to that. A course was added, and again, a registration was added. And again, it used the fee description set up in preferences, allowed you to do a group option to go in and apply a payment to that group, and you get a results panel telling you the numbers of what happened. All right, here we go. Lori, uh, kids, attendees, we are 20 minutes in. We got 10 minutes, 10 minutes for Q&A here. Uh, what are the questions or what are things that um, in the process that you would take issue with or have a suggestion? Um, or generally, how close is this to something that you guys could use you know, in two weeks when um, Devin and John get their, their downloads all done, uh, that we would be able to turn you loose on this? All right. I just hate it when and Lori is, wants, Chuck. Yeah, that's right. Lori, <laughs> is, Lori is, is chatting on that. Um, I don't have anything. Nothing. Okay. Well, let me ask. The, the, the big one I have is, and again, both both uh, Edigo and ProTrain do have a apparently an hours earned or a rough idea of how many hours or units is this class. And um, the question is uh, for you guys, you as our Aceware partners, do you want? Would it be helpful? Would you like to try to capture that as part of the upload? Because it's certainly uh, certainly possible. 
hours earned. The only other one that I was thinking about, and I'm going to escape to get out of this, would be interest code. You know, do you want uh, do you want an interest code, and would you want it to be um, a default for like all ed to go courses have an ed to go interest code, or do you want it to actually tune down into having a subject matter code on the course? And again, for our ed to go partners that are setting in, and they promise they're they're being very good. So I'm really proud of you guys. Um, on the course record and and in and, and the way we set up our courses, we have something called an interest code field, uh, which allows whenever a student enrolls in the class, uh, their name record gets stamped, their name record gets stamped with an interest code that ties to the same class. So it kind of pollinates the name record. All right. Um, gosh, Lori. I'm wondering if we ought to do. It's taken a while for the questions, Chuck. It's taken a while for the questions, but they are. You got a few in, coming because so, uh, I want to uh, do. A, a uh, we coming. can do some uh, polling here, uh, and just show of hand stuff. So go ahead. Okay. Um, two or three, almost the same. When is the best time to do the import? Do I wait for the check for that to happen, or can I go ahead and do the import at one time and then the check at another? What's the best way to handle that? And that that is going to between that is honestly going to be between you and number one your accountant there at the school, but number two between your partners uh, with the vendor. And as I said earlier, um, unless you have a reporting need where you need that data in more often than once a month, it kind of ties to what is you you and your vendors agreed upon schedule for payments. The closest you can tie the upload, download, the download import to the schedule of payments, then that groupiness, you know, the idea of grouping these together. Uh, so we've got, well, I was looking up, this was a different case here. Let me look up Mr. Uh, Bunyan. The closer you can get to uh, the point where, uh, let's go to the next class. Oh, he's all, Bunyan's all paid up. But the, the closer you can get to the point where all the registrations in that group are covered in the check coming in from your vendor, that would, to me, make the most sense. Now, the other thing is, you, of course, have the ability to, uh, oops, not the ability to group. You have the ability to regroup groups. You know, you can say group this registrate group this group with another registration group. So if you had a download of of five registrations, the fifteenth of the month, and then you had another five registrations from ProTrain uh, today, and you wanted to, and the checks come in today, you could go in and take that two-person group and group them with the seven however many person group you did on the 15th, and then apply one payment for the whole thing. Um, uh, so again, that's, that would be, uh, again, I think that's something you'll negotiate out between your vendor, obviously your accounting system within the unit there, uh, but that uh, the idea of trying to correlate the check amount with the group of people you're bringing in would allow you to take advantage of the group payment where everything is all paid off in one in one pass. Other questions? How is the course number assigned? The course number comes from the section number that you would have set up within your vendor's system. Um, and again, I think different vendors do it a little bit differently. Um, the idea that if we're looking at, let me get to desktop, uh, import test, uh, we'll just look at the ProTrain model, the idea that there would be some kind of section number uh, that is tied into that particular class. Now, um, one of the things I was thinking, Matthew, is that if the section number was kind of a generic serialized number that's kind of between the partner and the clients, uh, that doesn't necessarily tie in with the 
a square number, how tough would it be to be able to say, put that number in the alias number and then let the user change the course code, but that for future uploads, downloads, you look in alternate course code rather than in course code. So I'll, I'll let him think about that. So that way, that the point of that would that would allow you if you wanted to do your 16, uh, you know, W for you know 2016 winter term, you'd be able to do that and still have. I'm gonna I'll go ahead and save this here. Yes, we want to change this. Yes, we want to change this. That would still leave you the serialized number from the database, you know, the vendor database uh, here. So you're basically searching uh, co-alias rather than um, co-course co co for the dupe. We'll let him think about that. But right, that's where it's coming from right now. It's based on that number uh, that's set up within your system. And again, I think in some cases you can put in when you build out your portfolio, you can maybe even edit that number somewhat. So again, we can we can kind of work with you on that. Other questions? I'm going to straight from Tracy because she represents a couple people that ask a very similar question, and she phrased it quite nicely. Okay. So if we give our Ed2Go students the option to pay us directly. In that case, we have to add the class to Aceware in order to take their payment. How would that work when we import the data from Ed to Go? Will it add the course twice? I, uh, okay, the issue here is that, and it ties to whatever number you have here, whether that number, and again, and and we're, you know whether Matthew and I we come to terms with what where we're going to put the number. But if you have the same number in your student manager database, this one right here, your yellow course screen, as you've got in your partner's database, it will not duplicate it. It will drop that new student into this particular class. But I guess, you know, again, the idea of if you're collecting the payment ahead of time, you're really... I'm trying to think. You, if if you're collecting the payment from your system, that name of the student is going to be in your database from the get-go. So you would not be downloading that. And I guess that's a question for again, John and uh, John and Devlin would be that if you've got a partner who is doing their own fee collection, I'm not sure they would be using the download because they'd already have the person in the database. So again, I, in your case I, there, I'm not sure the download would be of any benefit because you're already done all, you've already done all the work. Uh, this would be probably more for folks who are doing, hey, I'm gonna let Betty and John and, and um, uh, Josh handle this. I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna handle the, the, the registration myself. So that, that's one, obviously, you still there, Lori? Did I lose you? Here. Nope, you're I'm okay. Here. I'm I, I heard a beep. I didn't know if my my headset's dying. Uh, okay, other other questions. Hang on, I'm going right. to go. A lot of I'm, applause, by the way. A lot of people uh, just really saying please and thank you and wonderful okay. and awesome and yeah, they're really well. Uh, let me them. let me uh, before we let people go, and I, I promise this would be short, and and um, I, I we'll, we'll answer questions. But let me do a couple of polls real quick here. And again, if you, if you would, um, you know, our guests from Ed to Go and Pro Train refrain from voting, uh, just to kind of give us an idea on this. But John may may want to vote no, and 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 Devin. But I'm going to have you uh, back to this question. Hours earned. Oh, hours earned. Let me go back one. Hours earned. Raise your hand if you would like to have the hours earned on that class uh, loaded into uh, the database as part of the download. Okay, I got one. All right, come on, take a minute or two. Uh, you know, take, you guys can ask. John does. Uh, well, we've got a half a dozen guys. So there's out of the group, uh, there's 20, 25 percent that want the hours earned. Um, there's another one. There's more coming in. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Thank you. I'm going to put your hands down. Uh, the other one is, oh, Lisa's coming in. All right. Thank you. The other question is interest code. And maybe, maybe we ought to ask 
if you would chat real quick with Lori, tell us, do you put an interest code on Ed to Go courses? Uh, well, let's just ask if you would you want to have an interest code on Ed to Go courses? Raise your hand. Uh, okay, okay, I, I see several hands going up. Okay, now the question is, and this is where you're going to need to chat this to, um, and again, my interest code, uh, you know, on the, it would go to the course and to the student. Um, would this be something that you could live with for a batch mode, or do you want it tied to the individual course? And um, I don't know. Again, and this is um, you know for the Ed to Go a Pro Train partners, if there are user defined fields that a client could use to say, I want this course called uh, computers, or I want this course called into my personal interest category. Now, one of the things Matthew and I talked about that is fairly simple to do, and of course it's easy for me to do. I just ask Matthew to do it. Um, but that there is the option that when you're doing an import that it allows you to ask, do you want to assign an interest code to this group of names? Um, and so we could add in a batch mode an interest code to all of the names that you bring in in that up download from a particular vendor. But it would be more generic like online reg or Ed to go, it would not necessarily be by the topic area of the course. So again, um, again, that's one you might want to uh, shoot Lori a chat, and we'll don't answer, don't worry about answering Lori. We'll we'll kind of sift them through in, in after the webinar. Uh, but if you would like to have um, a, a generic interest code, or if you don't care about an interest code. If you don't care about an interest code, don't don't respond. But if you're okay with the generic, say yes, generic. If you want a specific one uh, tied to the content of the course, um, then you can uh, you know ask that. Now remember, this is a, a a tip thing. When you have a when you have a course, and we'll look at our our course after the course has registered its people. You can always go back to that class. This is QuickBooks. So we're going to go in and assign a finance code to this. Hit the Save button, and it will say, would you like to apply this code to all of the registrants? So you can always, after the fact, go in and assign an interest code to everybody in that class so that we can go back in later, uh, look at Mr. Bunyan or Henrietta, and she'll have her finance interest code stamped on that record. Lori, I've rambled and rambled. Any other uh, questions uh, that, that were relevant to this that people might want to have covered before we let you go? And we'll sift through our, our feedback. Uh, some people want to make you aware of the fact that they have both uh, registrations that are collected on their end, and then some of their registrations the partners collect the phone, so it, okay. Now, what, what I'd want to know is what I'd want to know if that is per partner or within one given partner. Uh, they have a mixed bag within the partnership, and of course, you know, Betty and Josh and Devlin can tell me the difference on that. Um, but that's Devin gonna... wants you to know. So hold on a second. Devin wants right. you to know that their download export allows the user to filter the download by who collected payments. Okay, so there is a filter on the who collect, and I'm sure John could do the same, um, you know, on the ProTrain side. So, okay, so in answer to that question, uh, we've got uh, um, a positive yes on that. And again, that's something. Again, I, I will tell you guys, I've been both of your vendors here have been very responsive about the offering to uh, to work with us and to help us make this easier for you guys. So again. Um, I, I think you're you're in good hands on this. So, um, and and again, uh, the the only other one I, I would mention, and I've kind of reached out to the legal studies group that uh, uh, that whether there's a possibility. I know some of you are using the legal studies bunch, and that certainly we could look at adding more elements to this uh, download routine as vendors make that available. So. Um, 
All right, any other general question, comments that would be useful? Otherwise, like I said, uh, you can watch for this in a few days and on your on your manager, but then again, you know, let's give our vendor partners a couple of three weeks to kind of get uh, some tweaking done on this so that uh, you'll be able to start using that. So, and and we will probably look at doing a partner level, you know, with each of the vendors, uh, a private session that might relate to more of the inside back end. Uh, if you're a, a ProTrain user, uh, exactly how the ProTrain interface works and how you're going to use it with this download and ditto for it to go. So, all right. Anything else, Lori? Matthew, uh, did I miss anything in the setup and the organization that you'd want to throw in? You've been helpful, but quiet. I, no, I think you got it. Good. All right. Lori, any, um, any, other, uh, any other goodies? coming from the group? Uh, Devin is telling me their download is available as of yesterday. As of yesterday. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, 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 and again, I would assume in that case you would talk to your partner, uh, talk to your partner rep about this and that uh, they'll be getting uh, getting that together. So, um, all right. Well, we will, um, we will look at the idea of the hours and again, I'll, I kind of digest the interest code piece to see what you're thinking. And um, folks, again, if, with questions, feel free to email me or Lori, and we'll uh, work on this. But uh, uh, Matthew, thank you for your work. Matthew's been working overtime because we said, hey, about two weeks ago, we put together this webinar. Matthew, it was, it was almost a Dilbert effect, wasn't it, Matthew? You know, we've sold this product. Now we'll build it for me. So, uh, and Matthew did a pretty good, darn good job. So, all right, going once. Going twice. Have a great day, everybody. Happy spring, and um, we'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.